Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Civilization VI as Scythia in the Brutal Deity Mode. All right, we're heading over here with our settler. We've got a few little things to go and do. We do definitely need to get our hands on a little bit more era score. I think we will be getting that pretty well, though. Thanks to this spreading. I'm tempted to get a shrine and manually spread a little bit, but, you know, that may be not necessary. So we're going to stick down a mine here on that. That's going to give me iron working and the wheel, which we are researching, which is quite useful. I'm also going to chop here and get another builder out. I'm going to send this builder to here, this bananas, I think. So we can continue to develop this uh, city. I would like to maybe build ancient walls. I think I get a boost for that. Or maybe that was masonry and I... Oh, wait, no. There is something that takes ancient walls, isn't there? No, I can't even remember. I can't even remember what gets boosted by ancient walls. Ah, yeah, it's engineering. So I could pick that up. That would give me like 100 science, maybe like 80 science. So building this is worth uh, 80 science. Um, I would also like to get the Warlord's Hall so I could start maybe producing units and, and get in position to uh, go for knights. And I do plan on doing a bit of chopping, so I think that could work out pretty well. Uh, I did get a granary in here, right? No, I definitely want to get the granary first because this city has some really, really nice tiles to work. And uh, the more population I can get in here, the more of these really, really nice tiles I'll be able to work. It's like, there's a really good hill over here. There's a really good hill here. There's a really good hill here, here, here. Like, there's plenty of tiles that we can work in here. So I think trying to force the city to grow a little bit will be quite uh, fruitful for us. And I think, I think I am going to spend some money here. Uh, my troops are really passing by. I think I am going to spend some money here. Even though I'm trying to save money to be able to upgrade into knights, I think I'm going to make sure that I secure these really, really nice hills. I'm going to stick a mine there. You're going to cross the river. You're going to chop here. Okay. Uh, we will chop out another builder. And then this builder is going to put a kerg in here and then improve that pasture. We are going to pick up... So I don't know if I'm ready to go straight for stirrups. But I definitely think it could be worth my while to um, maybe pick something else up really like just before that. Although I think I could just go straight for stirrups and start working on it. So I think I think we'll kind of go that route and just start working on it. Now I want to I want a commercial hub in here, and I think I might put it over here. So let's swap that tile plop down our commercial hub because we need the gold and I do have another forest chop in here which is good. We chopped out that builder which is useful. So we need gold from our trade routes. That's our main objective right now is to build up a nice stockpile of gold uh, to secure ourselves a useful and fruitful uh, mid and late game. I would like to throw down my commercial hub here but I'm going to wait until I chop that. So what I will do is, I think I'm going to chop out the shrine to give me the faith and culture from that. And it will also allow me to build missionaries to start spreading my religion a little bit more aggressively. So that my so that I have the advantage of crusade. Because that's going to be an important part of my timing attack that I'm going to be pulling off here once I get to knights. Alright, great scientist, great profit points, that's good. Let's go ahead and move here. I think... Uh, to force growth in here, I think I will harvest these bananas. Oh, I need irrigation to harvest those. Okay, well, we can work on that. Um, I think I'm going to harvest here as well. That'll put one more turn in that shrine. Then I think I would like to go to Preslov and get plus one from them. I think I want to be um, good friends with Preslov because they're going to help me build units. So I'm going to put an envoy in there. I'm going to improve this. That's going to give me extra faith from this Kurgan. These are good tiles. I think I will put a hill here. And then I'll chop there. So I feel like we're developing our terrain pretty well here. Um, we're going to have a lot of useful stuff going on. Right, we'll move over there. We'll go to the next turn. Just need this commercial hub. I'm going to settle on this marble which will actually give me a spare marble to charge. I could also, to, to, to sell rather, I could also become friends with people. Okay, there's the Scythian Horse Archer, there's the plus four points, and we get double. 
So these are basically just archers and they will upgrade it to crossbowmen, I believe. No, they upgrade to field cannons. Okay, these will be mildly useful during the war. Not super useful, but mildly useful. Um, I want to get my... I think I'm going to grab one more builder in here. Just to keep things pushing along. I think I'll stick a Kurgan down here for the extra yields. Now, I finished the Sack of Horse Archer, so let me have a look at this city. This city could really use a granary. But I also super need a um, encampment. Let me have a look at this city. So, currently, I don't need this food, so I'm going to work these hills. Because the food is unnecessary, because this city can't grow anyway, it doesn't have a granary. What it does need is a builder to improve this hills to get its production uh, up. So I might spend eight turns building a builder here, and then that would boost this city. So I would like to get a commercial hub. And I think that's a valid thing to do. I have two on the way, but I also need encampments. So I think I might throw down an encampment over here, and then a commercial hub there later. Because we also need to start generating great general points, because we're a little bit behind Macedon here already. So we'll get started on that, but I think I'm going to go Builder first, because the extra production should pay off in the long run. I'm going to settle this city here on the marble. Then I'm going to sell the marble, I think, to somebody who maybe needs it. How much would you pay me? You'd pay me 13 gold per turn, so that's actually quite a decent amount. Probably like 8, 7? Would you go up to 8? No, you'd go up to 7. So that's uh, 171 gold plus 7 gold per turn. That's really, really good, considering it's going to take us about 30-ish 30, 30 turns to get those. Guys, I do need to start producing um, knights. And I think what I'm going to do is probably produce a few heavy chariots. I'd also like to produce a swordsman, if I could, because that would get me some extra era points. So I might go ahead and actually stop by here and grab ironworking before um, knights so that I can get a few extra era points. So this city is lately settled. Or settled late is probably a better way to phrase that. So it's going to need some work. I think we might just go for the... Uh... Well, there's not really a good district in here that I could go for. I mean, the commercial hub is always really good. This city isn't going to be able to really build units. So what I might do is I might throw down the commercial hub. And then just work on internal infrastructure in here, like the granary. So this city can just grow big, grab more tiles. And then maybe I'll send a couple of builders over here from my capital or something. So I definitely want another Kurgan. I definitely want to chop here. Well, this city is already pretty developed. I think I am going to unlock this, and I think I am going to work the production tile, because that's going to speed up how fast the city gets everything. And then I might go ahead and improve this mine. And then I might swap that forest over so I can do another forest chop, and maybe I'll chop out a builder to uh, keep developing my land quite well. Okay, goodbye. Because I want to get my I want to get infrastructure up early so that I can support an army. So I don't plan on settling any more cities, so I can make promises to people. Now Alexander's pretty angry with me. Um, which is fine. I'm not too worried about that. So let's chop here. And then let's stick down the commercial hub for plus four. That's gonna be some error score as well if we can finish that. I'm gonna get a Kurgan here. And let's go ahead, we will kind of unlock things and make some decisions about how we're going to do this. So I'm thinking uh, three production, two production in science, three production, two production, two food, two, two production, one thing. Um, and then I definitely want another Plains Hill over here to continue to boost my production because I don't need growth right now. So I have another builder. I'm going to send him over there. And I think now that I have a shrine, I'm going to grab like a couple missionaries and just kind of help my religion spread a little bit. I'm spreading pretty well, but I think if I could grab some of these further cities a little bit quicker, I think that would be really, really good. Because if I check some of these out, right, if we check these religions out, we've got a plus four in here. If I could get a little bit of my own pressure over here a little bit sooner, I think that would be really, really good. Okay, I'm going to get you guys to fortify up here. I have a chop here. That's going to finish the um, commercial hub. 
I'm going to go ahead and grab the market so that I can get another trade route. The market will also provide me with gold that will support my empire. Now the Kurgans are really good for pro providing gold as well. So that's something worth keeping in mind. All right, let's move here. I do need to start producing chariots. So the moment when I do that is probably going to be sometime in the next 20 turns. I want to get it like maybe with the current gold rate I'm coming in at, I could maybe get like four to five chariots um, with the extra commercial hubs and be able to sustain that into more production. So let's go ahead and stick a mine here as well. And I think for the border growth, and just generally having extra culture, I might work this instead, because I think this is better. One food, two production, one culture, I think. Although that does slow down the trading, the, the this, significantly. I also think it might be worth my while to stick a couple of farms in this city. But I think actually a water mill could provide the city with the growth that it needs to continue. But for now, I think it's fine. I think it, I think this city will be fine. Maybe I'll move this trade route over. This city is getting pretty close to its maximum pop anyway. So if I swap that trade route over to Muscat, that'll uh, that'll be quite good. So you want to buy my amber for a decent amount of gold. I think actually I could probably get more gold from somebody. So I'm going to look maybe to Japan and see if Japan wants to buy my amber. Uh, Japan doesn't have much. Maybe Jayavar Jayavarman will buy it. You'd give me 8 gold per turn, Japan would give me... Okay, you just won't give me money. Gorgo, it's likely I'm gonna go to war with you and you already have Amber. Teddy, you don't have Amber, but what would you give me? Okay, you obviously already have that. Um, Cyrus, how would you like to buy some Amber? You'd give me five gold. So actually, I think Jaya Varman was like the best deal I got there, right? Yeah, eight gold. So I'll take this plus like a couple gold per turn. It'd be like three. Four, would you give me four? Would you give me five? Five is too much, but four is good. All right, we'll sell that amber off and we'll get that little bit of gold income. That's going to help us maybe purchase another horse. Uh, or, or knight, rather. So let's get over here to upgrade this. Although, wait, where are you going? Up okay, you're heading there. Then I'm going to get you to run up here. So the more cities I get converting, the better. I'm just going to try and drop like one conversion in each city. And what that'll do is it'll start my pressure hitting out in more places. In particular, I want to spread it down towards uh, Macedon because he's likely to be my first target. Um, because he's likely to uh, declare war on me and so I want to be able to take him on. I might go chop here, uh, cancel that move. Getting some exploration done up here. I might see if I can get open borders with Gorgo so that I can sneak past here and just explore the world a little bit better. We can no more have exact religion There's theology. theology, so the most important th thing there is the temple that we can enhance our religion. We do want to enhance our religion in this game because we have a really early religion. I didn't mean to give you gold, I want to get gold off you. You'll give me one gold per turn. Okay, that's a deal. So now we have open borders with Gorgo. That's going to improve our relations, make her less likely to declare war on us. Now, I think... There's kind of two routes I can go. I could go to feudalism. That would boost my acquisition of chivalry. But it would mean that I would build um, a little cavalry slower. Or, I could make my way down to Divine Right, I'd have a, a monarchy government with lots of boosts, and I could also get uh, cavalry faster to support my push, so I think I might come down this way. On the other hand, I could, like, this isn't that much of a diversion to go Games and Recreation, Defensive Tactics, Feudalism into Divine Right, like it's only a 16 turn diversion. So if I did that, what I could do is if I maybe got monuments up in the meantime really quickly, I could speed that up significantly. And also, I'm going to put an envoy in Kumasi. That's going to be like getting another uh, monument. And that's going to significantly boost up how long it's going to take as well. Like, it took two turns off this. It took a couple turns off all these other ones. So that's going to shave some time off. So I think right now I want to focus on getting culture so that the timing lineup for when I get knights is really nice and in my favor. I might even divert for another tech on the way. 
So I think I'm going to go ahead and see if I can chop out a builder in here as well. Uh, even though I'm on my way to the thing that I need, um, getting more builders is really, really good. The city's already well developed now, so I think I could move Magnus maybe down to Isik and do some chopping down here. Or I could even move it over here to Tolstaya and develop that city really quickly. So I think I'm going to grab Magnus now that uh, Muscat has been, you know, pretty well developed. I'm going to reassign Magnus down to Tolstoya. And then I'm going to move this builder that I just produced over here. So that's why I like the pyramids, because one of the opportunity costs of building builders early is that they have less builder charges than if you wait for medieval era with the um, plus two build charges. But with pyramids, you're only losing out on one build charge. And if you can maneuver your empire correctly, you can take advantage of having those build charges earlier, even though you have less of them. So let's go to Armagh and let's spread our religion here. That's going to put one. Okay, Tolstoya is converting anyway. So I think I want to get down here to um, Alexandretta. I'm going to put a mine there. You're going to jump up on this hill. Okay, my empire is starting to develop. It might be worth my while to grab apprenticeship before stirrup so that I have extra production. Or after. I might go for before because I am about to finish a campus and that will speed up my tech acquisition pretty quick. And I'm not quite ready to start producing cavalry. So that would just give me that little bit more time that I need to get prepped. So let's go ahead and get open borders with you. Would you pay me? You'll give me one gold per turn. That's an extra 30 gold that I just got for free essentially. Just for, you know, wanting to send my scout to new places. More city-states dying. Okay. Okay. All right, so unit needs orders over here. Let's go ahead and chop. Now, I have more build charges. I'm going to send these over to Tolstoya so I can start to develop that city. Because I think my capital is pretty well developed. Well, I guess I could put a hill up there. A mine up on that hill. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, actually. I'm going to go chop those bananas and put a mine up there. Across the river, we're going to spread to Lisbon. What is their mission? Religious conversion, that can happen. The good news is, we are spreading here, plus 10. Really good pressure around here. That's going to come in our, our favor, I hope. Now look at that. We're starting to get pressure in some of these cities. It's really, really good. So I do want to build a temple. That's going to be the next thing I do in my capital. I really need Warlord's Throne, but I also need the Temple so that I can get um, some more enhancements for my religion. In particular, I think Amenities might be a really good move here. All right, there's Shaka. I think I might send a delegation to Shaka and see if I can get an alliance with him. So let's grab Open Borders right away. He wants one gold per turn. What if I gave you, like, 20 gold straight up? There you go. Yeah, I gave him 20 gold. That'll keep him happy and give him, get him to give me open borders. It saves me 10 gold over, you know, 30 turns, which isn't too bad. Okay, there's the plus four commercial hub in the capital. I do also want to get the market in here, and I need monuments up. So we have a bunch of faith. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab another couple of missionaries. I want to keep a certain amount, though, in bank for... Um, what to call them. And we have our Golden Age, so that's really good for the Medieval Era. We're going to be able to do a lot with that. Let's go ahead and spread to Lisbon. Now, we don't need it to... We just need to get an extra chunk of pressure in here. That's all we need. We don't need to, like, convert the city. We just need a little bit of pressure so that we can secure our religion. Let's see, you're getting plus 11 over here. And what this will do is it'll help it spread further. So getting an early religion... In particular, getting an early religion spread is really important. Okay, let's go to the next turn. It's mostly important because we have the Crusade belief, so by getting getting Armagh, Lisbon, and Preslav to start spreading my religion for me is going to be really, really good because it's going to give me a lot of pressure down this side of the map, which means I don't have to spread it manually as much. Yeah, I think I decided to send you back up this way. And I think I was going to send you up, maybe up into Greece, to try and head off this religious pressure that I'm 
kind of coming up against here over with the um, Zor Zoroastrianism or whatever it's called. Zoroastrianism. I don't know how to say it. So if I spread here, that's going to give me a little boost. And it's going to take not quite as much time for me to get settled in Alexandria. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to go ahead and look for another city. Because a lot of these a lot of these cities are going to flip on their own time. Like you can see here, this is one turn from flipping. And we'll see. Some cities should start flipping to my religion pretty soon. I've got three currently under my belt. Okay, there's Tolstoya. A lot of these cities you're converting into turns, ten turns. Some good pressure down here. So go ahead and do Preslov. Then you're going to come across this river. And you're going to do Vilnius. Now this trade route, I think I'm going to send it to Muscat, because that city needs help developing. Um, Tolstoya needs help developing, but it's got Magnus in place now. So I think that's not going to be too important. I have another one of these guys. I'm going to send this one out more to the east to try and get a little bit of my own pressure going over there. There's Candy. So let's talk to Genghis and see if he'll give me open borders. So he wants one gold per turn. I'll see if he'll take like 10 gold. He probably wants something like 15. Yeah, 15 gold will do it. Get those open borders with him. That'll buy me time. Good relations are, are important. Uh, Shaka actually wants to be friendly, so I think I will go ahead and declare friendship with him. Uh, having a friendship with someone like Shaka is really, really good. Because he's likely to um, be useful in holding off other people. Let's go to the next turn. So you want my Grapevine Cross? I don't think so. I think I like having that faith generation. Delegation is most welcome. So my campus is almost done. That's going to speed up my acquisition of things. And it, most importantly, uh, getting that uh, production boost is going to be really good. Okay. So progress towards Reformed Church. Vilnius has converted. That's really good. That means I have another city down here generating pressure, which means I've kind of locked down this axis of the map, which means if I'm spreading out more this way to fight back against the Zoroastrianism, shouldn't be too hard. In fact, I think I might even send this guy out this way to like Valletta and see if I could flip Valletta that would be really really good I'm gonna tr now I really want gold but this city also oh man getting a thing with Kumasi would be nice but I think I really want gold but I think this city just badly needs the uh thing the development food and, and all that jazz yeah look at that it's gonna speed this city's growth up you know significantly and I think I want to for I want to focus on production in here for a while. I might even grab another builder to stick down more Kurgans so the city. I might stick a farm like down here so the city has a good food tile. But I might stick like another Kurgan here and maybe a farm there or something along those lines to help the city develop a little bit better. Um, okay, let's spread to Preslov. There we go. Right, we're starting to hit up our religion in a multiple multiple places. That's really really good. Plus twelve, plus four, Alexandria. Alexandrietta. Let's go. Alright, so things are going okay. Getting some good exploration off. Games and Recreation is almost done. Okay, let's go ahead and choose our production now. We just finished the campus. This city, I really want the extra science to speed up my acquisition of stirrups. It's already pretty quick. If I went for library, it would speed it up by about just over 10, just say just about 10% if I got a library. Um, it's go currently going to take uh, 28 turns, 11 of which will be spent building the li library roughly. So 19 turns, so it would, it would shave off like two to three turns off the... Um, acquisition of knights so i think that's okay to go for the library on the other hand i could also just start producing my heavy chariots so that i can do the purchase upgrade now there's kind of um i might go feudalism into mercenaries actually so i think what i'm going to do is i really need the culture here at this point in the game to try to develop towards my um I'm going to do feudalism into mercenary so I can do the purchase upgrades and then I'll go for divine right 
so that I can do um, triple policy into actually hard building the thing. So we're going to start building heavy chariots soon and we're going to use the purchase upgrade timing to try to make that work for us. Um, plus one, I would be able to get plus one science here if I became the suzerain of Babylon because I do have a relic. So that's not too bad, actually. If I got plus one science from my relics, um, that would speed me up quite a bit as well. It would also give my libraries plus two science, and I do plan on building a library, possibly after this monument. I think I'm just going to pick up the plus two faith here off of Armagh, because what that's going to do is it's going to mean I get more faith purchasing in throughout the game. In particular, the next age might be worthwhile having faith purchasing. So I'm going to chop here with Magnus. That's going to finish the granary. Then I'm going to quickly grab another builder in here and use this builder to continue to chop out more. So all this chopping is generating us a lot of faith that we're going to use to spread and enhance our religion. Once this temple is done, it's enhancement time, I think. Now, normally I don't enhance my religion, but, you know, we're trying different things. All that jazz. Let's go to the next turn. We have definitely enough of these era points to get a golden age, which I'm really, really happy about. That means we're in a really, really, really good position in terms of that. Now, walls are something I do need to start considering, particularly on these border cities, like, say, these three to four cities over here. Less so on these two. I can kind of get away with that. But it's definitely something on my mind, and I am pretty close to defensive tactics. Now, you built a builder in particular because you wanted to improve these mines so that you could build your encampment a little bit quicker. Okay. Need those encampments up. Need a lot of infrastructure to support a war. Okay, so you actually don't need to spread to here. Interesting. Uh, where's my other missionary? You're over here. Okay. Cancel that move. Let's see if you can find more cities beyond here to spread to. Oh, it looks like Pasargade is dying. It looks like maybe that's Alexander doing that. Let's have a quick look and see who uh, Persia is at war with. Oh no, he captured Preslev. That's actually really annoying. I was, was going to be relying on them for production for when I was producing units. Oh, I really need to grab Irrigation before I do this. So Irrigation, Irrigation into Apprenticeship into Stirrups. I would love to do this. If this was a, came a little bit later, I would do this. I probably am going to liberate Preslev when I get around to it. I'm going to reject this. And I just built my temple, which means it's time for Apostles. So we get the double Apostle to enhance the religion. I need a Warlord's Throne. Um, but I don't need that until I'm actually going to war. The only thing it would be useful for is potentially a promotion. Mm, not really a promotion here that I need. Black Marketer wouldn't be terrible. I could alternatively pick up Liang and start getting extra builder charges. Uh, but I think trade routes are just better for me right now because it's going to help me generate the gold that I need to sustain a large army of knights that are going to rush across the battlefield. I really want to build a market, but this city also needs a builder to help it develop. Um, there are actually a few builder charges that it'll be able to take advantage of over here because I'm only using two for this city. Um, currently, two mines, and then I could maybe drop down two mines for this city. So perhaps a granary would be really good. I, I'm actually making enough money where I could probably purchase a granary and still be in good shape by the time I want to purchase horsemen. Um, what that would do is it would open up the city to continue to grow a little bit more. Or um, I could get the market and start and having a big, big, big income. I also do need the monument to help me get these these faster. So I think I'm going to start working on monuments because I think that's like going to be the big key thing that holds me back if I don't get them. Now we did get the market in here, so I really want a trader. So we're going to grab that trader. And I think I might even put a trader in Pazirk here to help it develop. Um, because ever since I crushed this hill, it's been not struggling, but it's just not been quite so strong. So we're going to cross here and spread. So you can see my religion is now the majority. 
but it, it doesn't have the most pressure, but it is sort of the majority. What was Jerusalem's bonus again? It has something to do with religion, but I just can't remember what it is. Yeah, this would be quite good. Um, if I could get Jerusalem on my side, I would actually be really happy about that because it could mean my religion would spread pretty heavily. I could definitely train an archer. Um, that would get me an envoy with Jerusalem. So, in fact, let's go in here and grab that archer first. Send the trade route to Kamasi and recruit a great scientist. That's less likely, although it is possible. I mean, I am generating great scientist points, but we're already in the medieval era. Ooh. That would be amazing if I could get Hildegard of Bingen. Um, so we're going to enhance our religion next turn, but I think I'm going to wrap up this episode now. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, though, I want to say I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you later, taters.